Hello again and welcome back to Illegally Sighted. This is BGFH and I'm back for another PC game low vision spotlight video. And uh, originally I had planned to record a video for Papa Song Grade 2 for you guys. I know I've had a few comments, I think both on Twitter and in the YouTube comment section. Uh, they'd like to see, uh, a couple people had liked, would have liked to have seen Papa Song Grade 2. And I just hadn't gotten around to it, and I was going to try recording it earlier, only to discover that it seems like, I don't know if there's something with iOS 9 or on my phone, um, <clears throat> but when I downloaded it originally, I played it for a very brief bit of time, and it seemed to work okay. But now I'm actually seeing where uh, there are actually some accessibility issues with the app, like buttons aren't reading, and there's actually screens where VoiceOver just doesn't acknowledge anything is there, like to get around the menu system. So I need to troubleshoot that a little bit more, maybe check AppleViz, see if uh, other people have recorded or reported other issues with that, and hopefully, if it is a problem, hopefully something else will um, fix Papa Sangre 2. And if at some point in the future here I can cover it, I will definitely try to cover that game for you guys. In the meantime, we're still in October and working our way up to Halloween, so I figured let's try one more horror game here. This came out on Steam earlier this week. Uh, actually, yesterday, if I remember correctly. It's called The Park, and it is... Um, I, it was on sale when I picked it up, um, pre-ordered it, just because I thought the trailer looked sort of interesting. And it's like, oh, it's on sale, let's try it. You know, let's, I need some more horror games to cover that sound interesting. The premise behind this one is like you're this mother who goes into this amusement park. Um, her son lost his teddy bear in the park, and you're trying to go back and ask uh, the attendants if they found it. And then your son runs off into the park, and you are following him, trying to get him, uh, trying to, you know, get him, essentially. And it's during the daytime, and then as you're going up the escalator into the park, you, it's, you get this weird, like, trippy thing, and it goes to nighttime, and now it's kind of like, ooh, typical dark horror game. Um, and I skipped a little bit past that, because right now... We just got off this uh, like little little riverboat swan ride thing here, and when you do that, you went through this long cave, and that, that actually told you the story of Hansel and Gretel, which actually does tie into the overall theme uh, topic of this game. Believe it or not, um, you know Hansel and Gretel—that's the classic fairy tale where they are. Um, you know, the parents want to leave them into the woods because they're going hungry. Um, they try to lose them in the woods, and then they come, you know, the, the Hansel takes the these rocks and makes a trail so they can get back home. They go out there again. Uh, the mother takes them out this time, and then they do get lost because he tries to, you know, uh, have a trail of breadcrumbs, but they can't... Um, they can't get back because birds have eaten the breadcrumbs, so they can't find their way back. They discover a witch, and they, uh, you know, she a little in this candy house or gingerbread house, and uh, the plan is for her to eat them. And uh, lo and behold, Gretel throws her in the oven, uh, tricks the witch into throwing her into the oven. And the story has a nice, happy little ending, uh, ending with some murder and a little healthy cannibalism. Uh, they decide to, uh, they need, they don't want to just eat candy, they are going to also eat the witch. So, yay cannibalism, or something. Uh, yeah, some of those fairy tales are pretty dark. Um, I will say, if you are in, like, it's really interesting if you, you know, you think the, like, fairy tales and stuff are kind of kiddie, Go look up Grim, Grimm's Fairy Tales, because the original forms of those, before they got all cleaned up and made for kids, those are some messed up stories, man, and they're actually pretty interesting. I've read a few of those. There's a few books of Grimm's Fairy Tales, and I've read a couple of them myself. I think early, later, the, or later last year, early this year, they actually had a story 
Uh, I saw something online where they released the true originals that are even a little bit more messed up than the ones that they have been putting out uh, over the past several years. And I don't know exactly what those originals are called or what kind of volume to look up for those, but I don't know. I'm just weird enough that I wouldn't mind actually seeing that. I would actually like to see like where, what kind of craziness all, craziness all these fairy tales came from. But anyway, we're not here to talk about fairy tales. We're here to talk about the park. I was just sort of catching you up to the story. It is first person, obviously, as we're looking around here. And if I right-click... Stop! Callum! Callum is the kid's name. Mm -hmm. And you hear usually like a response from the kid. And so basically I can call out at any time. Callum! Where did you go? So it's really interesting. I, I'm not going to... I'm trying not to spoil the game. I'm going to show you part of it. This is a very short game. I want to say probably about an hour. Hour and a half tops. Was shut off. Those poor children. I'll let her the narrate here. World against them. The forest. The birds. The old witch. Even their own parents. I used to imagine that Callum and I were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister, hand in hand against the unkind world. We were always hungry, looking for our own house made of candy, looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places where the tree branches reach like claws. Okay. So there's a little, like, you know, she's commenting on the ride that we just went through in the whole Hansel and Gretel story. So there are a couple of plots that are going on. Um, you have, of course, you trying to find your your child. Mommy needs to see you, Callum. And then you have you're starting to read the. There's a couple signs and there's some letters and notes and stuff that you find around this theme park that are cluing you into that eh, this park is maybe kind of messed up. Basically, there's this mascot guy, uh, what is his name, Chad the Chipmunk or something like that, or Chad, something like that, and apparently it's this, like, old crazy guy in a suit, you know, the mascot suit, and uh, there's a ride coming up here where basically the whole spiel was he went a little crazy, some guy, some kid made fun of him uh, while he was, while the kid was waiting in line for a ride. Another accident. And and the guy went a little psycho <clears throat> and uh, ended up killing the the uh, customer. And all kinds of weird stuff is happening or has happened in this park. Now, visually, here's what I'm going to comment on. You get these, you find these papers all throughout the park. Here's an example of what they look like. Now, if you have watched some of my recent videos like Soma, like um, Layers of Fear, and a few other ones that I've done in the past, one of the great things they did <coughs> is they would show you the original document or item that you are reading. Could be a document, could be a passport, or like a little key card, could be whatever. But if you clicked it again it would actually bring up like a little dark uh, like a text box that actually had all whatever the content was in the little text box and it was much 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 easier to read unfortunately the game uh, unfortunately the park does not do that this is what you're gonna get and it depends on the material you get some stuff that is typed you get some stuff that is handwritten. You get some stuff, the, a couple things that are really horribly handwritten. Um, so, unfortunately, KNFB Reader, mm, it did okay with a couple of them. A couple things, but for the most part, if you want to read them, you're probably going to have to like use a magnifier app or like a portable CCTV or a magnifier or something to read them because... It's just not clear enough, and it's just not... You're not going to have probably very good luck. I did a little bit of experimenting yesterday and today with that, and unfortunately, it didn't work out very well. Uh, that said, 
that is just this game because, like I said, a lot of other games. You know, it's interesting because, you know, a while back, you know, I would kind of just more overlook or just kind of ignore some of the side stuff. It's like, yeah, I might read a little bit of it here and there, but I would end up ignoring a lot of the side stuff just because there was so much reading and it was slow for me to do. It was rather tedious. And so, unless the game was really, really captivating for me, I just kind of, meh, well, okay, whatever. I get the main story. I might miss out on some side stuff, but whatever. But, you know, now that I have just such easy access with, you know, magnifier apps from my phone or a KNFB reader, uh, especially if the game is, you know, remotely interesting and I do kind of want to see what some of these other things are, be it uh, emails or papers or whatever, um, I will be more inclined to actually take the time and read some of this side story stuff. Uh, or, you know, gives more... Uh, gives more detail into the background and stuff for the story. So the way the path works is, like I said, you get the little opening there, um, you go into the park, you walk down to that first um, little swan ride, and then you're well, sweetie. you're hunting, you're trying, or you're you know tracking down your kid. But it's really funny because you actually on the way you kind of it makes you go through and you get to ride some of these theme park rides so i think what are we coming up to here what are we coming up to here the bumper cars i think there's about four or five different rides um oh yeah yeah no okay this one okay yeah the scrambler or whatever okay so thankfully, I can walk faster, at least in the first. Make the blood run to my head. Make me dizzy. At least in the first part of the game, I'll talk a little bit more about the second part of the game in a little bit here. But um, I'm gonna, I'm trying to decide how much really to show you guys, because like I said, this game is really pretty short. So basically, you know, for a while, Callum, where are you? you're calling out for your kid, trying to track him down. And then you, you know, you get to ride these rides, and usually doing so triggers some sort of event to happen that opens up the next path for you. So, let's go in this little booth. If I, okay, I gotta go around this fence here real quick. I can't jump. And I have to stop the ride first. Now, one thing that I really wondered when I played through this last night, um, I beat it last night because it's, like I said, it's not hard and it doesn't take long. Um, so, I stop it here, I'm in the booth, but then I go over here to little Mr. Mascot guy, and I choose to ride... While it's moving. Yeah, yeah, well, quit moving then. Go slower. Um, when I go on the ride, how does she go back in here and then start the ride, you know? How does she do that? Like, I don't know. So I click on it, fade to black, she gets in, and boom, we're off. So I don't know how we're starting it. And with a couple other little odds and ends, it's, it was at this point in the game where I started to think, well, maybe that's just weird game logic, but also maybe, so now we got some weird stuff going on, it does this weird kind of like horror sound effect thing a lot but I'm thinking you know I wonder if this is actually real is this something in her head is this something she's remembering is she hallucinating what's going on like I didn't think too much of it yet but it was just some sort of weird like how is she operating this ride but as we move on a little bit further here um you there is a little bit more validity to that because um you'll like I said you'll get to see a couple of other things that really make me question that even a little bit more so I do like the fact that your character does have a body I can look down I'm not just a floating head that's good I like that and it's kind of cool to be able to ride the rides 
Um, yeah, I didn't mind this ride too much uh, growing up, you know. The one I, I there was another one like this that I didn't like where you know it didn't just go up a little bit. There's another one where basically you would start out, you go around in circles, and then it would actually tilt you like vertical straight up and down while you were spinning, almost like you were on a sideways Ferris wheel. Or then it would go all the way upside down, and then you would be twirling around. Yeah, I don't really like that. I don't like rides really that go upside down. Um, the only exception that I've found that have actually treachery hides in thoughts. Hold on. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. I looked down at this wrinkled red balling thing and I thought, is that it? We build our world from expectations, and the world that I had built for Callum was no different. He was so real, so there. And so far from my expectations. And they shattered. And as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought. Okay. So I'll get to my story here back in a minute here, but we got this little read this thing here. So this one, it's a little bit darker. Nice contrast on it. A little small. And I think the text is actually kind of blurry. Like, I don't know. To me, it doesn't really look, even though it's dark, it doesn't really look that clear. So reading things in this game is kind of a problem if you have low vision, I think. Some of the, some due to contrast, some due to, like, the handwriting or the font they use. But whatever. There's a few different... Okay. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> um... But yeah, there's just a few. You, I can see where you where you're gonna have trouble with some of that. And if you want to really take in what is fully going on in the story in this game, you really do want to read some of the stuff because you get the narration from the mother here. Don't hide from me, Callum. But you you also have to get a lot of the story from like what's going on both with the park and especially later on with um with uh the mother and the son themselves um through a lot of text but what i was saying was that i um the only ride i really liked that went upside down was uh in valley fair the original um corkscrew ride it was smooth enough and it was pretty quick so it really didn't bother me too much, but, uh, okay, here we go. Here's the bumper cars. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't, I like to go fast. Crashes and 80s music. Guess it floats someone's boat. <laughs> you know, I, I like going fast, but I just don't really like going upside down. And, uh, let's see, we're, are, I should be paying more attention to the game. It's a very linear game. Um, you're not going to, you're not really going to get lost. Like I did, there was one part in particular where I did overlook something stupid where I had to click on something to trigger one of the events to move on. And that's coming up here pretty soon. I'll actually, yeah, it's coming up pretty soon. So I can try to point that out, but otherwise it's a very linear game and it says very short, um, but I do like fair rides, you know, uh, bumper cars are great. Um, I remember bumper boats, those were pretty awesome. I remember going on some where it was like you had these little inner tubes with like the seats and the, the little engine in them. Those were fun, man. I remember doing those. Um, so here we got one that's lit up and glowing here. So remember when I said, you know, the mascot and all the trouble around the park? There's, like I said, there's also all these other problems where you find out there have been accidents, people have been injured, people have been killed. This one was like the staff member that was working on it. Um, they were doing something with the bumper cars and he, something broke on the crane or something and he got crushed. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of not good things happening in this park. And here we get a nice little scene here depicting 
some of that uh, boom. Okay. There we go. Um, I think I have an idea. Yeah, I think I have an idea where I, about where I want to end it in this video. It's a little while yet, so we're, eh, hmm, I'll have to think about it. But let's keep going here. Um, so we have a couple more rise. See, now what's interesting is that this game it's kind of uh, divided into two areas. I would say. Mommy is coming, Kelm. So this part here, where you're kind of walking through the park, you're calling out for your son. And as more things start happening, more weirdness starts going on, you can tell... Where are you, Calm? She gets a little bit more freaked out, you know? There's just, what's going on? Where are you? You know, I totally get that. Um, so now, when I call out again, listen to what you just heard. You heard the baby. Where are you, Callum? Yeah, okay, a little baby whining again. So, this is where I really started thinking, okay, this is not actually happening, like, for real. She's either hallucinating or remembering something, because first you have the kid that you're trying to find, but now, instead of hearing that, you're hearing a baby. So, it's like, okay, something is a little bit more screwy going on as far as with what's going on with this mother. Is this mother crazy in the head? It's a matter of public record that I am a failure as a mother. Or what? Once, when Callum was very small, I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. Don't even remember what it was. When I came back, the sheriff was standing next to the car, watching my boy through the window. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes. Judgment. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just the scratch scratch of his pen on the notepad. When he gave it to me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she... Just get some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand volts surging through my veins. Help is agony. I'd rather die. I wanted to scream. I'd rather you pulled your gun and shot me. But instead my mouth said, yes, Sheriff. Yeah, she's a little nuts, I would say. A little nutsoid there. So we got a big old giant Ferris wheel right here, and we are going to ride that um, because in addition to just kind of triggering events, uh, sometimes you get a little bit more story in the game through riding some of these rides. And the Ferris wheel uh, is one of those situations. So we are going to figure out, uh, let's see, how do we get in? Okay, here we go. I think we got this. I could just jump over the rails, but no, it won't let me. Alright. Um, so, what I was kind of also starting to say was that this game is kind of weird because it starts out really kind of atmospheric, and I kind of like it. You know, it's like, oh, you know, what would you do if you were in, you know, granted it's when the park is closed and there's not really other people here, but... You know, what would you do if you lost your kid somewhere or your kid ran off and you couldn't find him? You know, I don't, I'm not married, I don't have a kid, I don't have anything like that. But I can imagine, you know, that's an interesting topic to explore in a game. And it starts out sort of that way. But then, without trying to give too many, you know, without spoiling... The game takes kind of a left turn. <laughs> like I said, you find out things are going weird in the park. Uh, you're looking for your kid. Callum, tell mommy where you are. And then, so we're getting toward the end here. We're getting we're kind of the middle toward the end of the park area. Um, there's a haunted house, kind of a house of horrors, little house that you see early on in the game, right before you get to the. Um, right before you get to the little swan ride, and you can't go in there because you don't have a flashlight. Well, she's going to talk here, so I will shut up and let her talk, and then I will continue my explanation. We're going to get more story here. OK. 
Come on. I know you're gonna talk. People come into your life for a reason. Dad used to say that before Mom ran off. After that, he mostly just drank. Things were different for Don and I. When we met, I was sweeping the floor at Susie's diner. He came in with some workers, but he didn't try to flirt or cop a feel like the others. He just ordered a coffee and sat there, watching me. When my shift was over, he offered to walk me home. I don't know how to describe that walk. We talked and laughed and eventually kissed. It felt like love. It felt like a fairy tale. I can't tell you if Callum was made that night or one of the ones that followed. But I think it has to be that night. That one perfect night. Don and I moved in together, but then, well, he died. According to the supervisor, his safety harness failed when he was working on the top of the Ferris wheel. Don was there one moment, and then gone. Sometimes people leave your life for no reason. I was three months pregnant with Callum. Fairy tale fucking over. Yeah, fair enough. So there's a little more, that, that part of the story, it, it ties into kind of more the latter part of the game. So, you know, like I said, it starts out about you trying to find your kid, and then it goes in this crazy kind of left turn. You start thinking, hey, this mother might not be all there. She's a little screwy. And then you find out, like, about, okay, her boyfriend um, got her pregnant, and then he died with the ferris wheel accident fell from that giant height up there so she was three months pregnant so then uh... things just really go down south from there and she just starts to lose her freaking mind and 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 where am i supposed i'm trying to remember where i'm supposed to go here okay i think we go this way um... So, like I said, there's a fun house, or like a uh, house of horrors sort of thing. Um, you don't have a flashlight, so she won't go in there because it's all dark. Well, eventually we do pick up a little flashlight, and then the game just totally takes this weird curve where it starts to kind of mix more of like a fun house with some weird stuff from her past. And it goes from more of like an atmospheric game like it is now to more of a straight up trying to do jump scares and stuff and honestly I really never jumped like it was sort of interesting but it was kind of predictable to me if you know if you've played any other horror games you kind of maybe see it coming and it depends I guess how susceptible you are to that kind of a thing ironically the only thing that actually made me jump the one time I might be able to show you on this video because it's actually in the first half of the game uh, let's see, where are we, where are we walking up to next? Oh, yes. We gotta trigger this little event here. Way, yeah, that can't be good. That can't be good. Alright, so we'll go through here. It's like, I want to give you, like, a good glimpse of the game and I want to try to hit a story arc or two but because this game is so short it's it's really hard to cover just a small part of it and have it make sense without a lot of people idolize their children you hear them talking about their kids and just the way they talk their fucking voices make me want to vomit my angel likes to read and little Johnny is so good on the piano Fuck those people! <laughs> you give up nine months of your life carrying them, you traumatize yourself giving birth to them, and then you spend the rest of your life as their slave. Wiping asses, mopping a piss, feeding them, little life-sucking monsters who take and take and take until... <sighs> we all go insane. Any parent who pretends otherwise is just dishonest. That's called choice supportive bias. I am honest. Callum really grinds my gears, and he owes me everything. Everything! It served the little fuck right if I just abandoned him. 
Yeah, okay. You know, I was with you for like the first sentence or so. You know, like when some ki when some parents are just like overly just like, oh my god, my kid is the smartest person. He like, he knows how to put on his shoe or whatever. It's like, yeah, okay, cool, great. But yeah, she went a little overboard there. Uh, she definitely is not bitter at all. <laughs> um... All right, so we'll do this next ride, and then I think I'll, I'll do the at least part of the next little section after this, and then we're going to wrap it up. Uh, you're going to get to see a good chunk of the game, but you know what? We're just going to wing. We're just going to go I with it. To ride this one. Never got around to do it before. Because I wanted to show you like how the game starts to get a little weirder, so. Again, there's this weird disconnect here where she just went on this crazy rant about like, oh god, you know, my kid ruined my life and, you know, he owes me everything because I put up with his crap and Stay where you are. Now she sounds like she's all afraid and she wants him back and so I don't know, she's like schizophrenic or something. Um, but yeah, there's just something kind of weird going on and so then when we yeah let's let's ride this sucker get on this little roller coaster here and i will be quiet here because again we're going to get some kind of weird stuff what do you want we need to talk about callum what do you mean what have you done to him i that's insulting you and your boy are everything that this place doesn't want the antithesis of what we stand for where is Callum? The poor child. He tried so hard to do what he was taught. He even left you a trail of breadcrumbs. But the park is just so hungry. Okay. Tell me where my son is. The witch has it now. Has both of you. No happy ending here, I'm afraid. Just... just leave me alone. Fool. You always were. Hey, so there's your Hansel and Gretel reference again. You got the witch. Whee! Down the roller coaster. And we're hallucinating again. We're going through... Oh, tunnels. Or, or looks like... Hallways. Bashing through doors. And boom. There we go again. Yeah, she's, uh, she's a little messed up in the head, I think. Boom, boom, whoa. Whoa. Whoa, dude, did we just hit? Yeah. Yeah, I think we just hit somebody. That might have been Callum. So yeah, she's definitely losing her mind. Um, you saw it looked like there was that little blurb with the little mu that big mouth that she was going into for a second. I think I saw a little blurb of that in there. Um, I think that was the front of that little House of Horrors funhouse thing. Uh, all right, so we got a little more story off of the roller coaster and. Now we want to go back down the ramp. Let's hoof it a little faster here again. And I'm going to take you to the next area and show you where the just show you something kind of cool where the game gets really kind of screwy uh, if it has if it, if it isn't already for you. All right, so here we got our tool. We got our little flashlight. The witch awaits. The witch awaits. All right, so. Oh, wait, no, I think I have to go back through here again. Okay. So before we actually go in the fun house, I'm going to leave it off where... Alan has bruises on his arms. Finger marks. Someone has been hurting him. I've asked him. Demanded, really, to know where he got the marks. But he doesn't want to answer me. Something has scared him into silence. Doesn't dare talk. He's been changing, too. Something sinister lurks in the darkness behind his eyes. I catch him staring at me at odd moments. In the night, he tosses and turns and cries out words that I cannot understand. When I try to soothe him, he snaps and bites at my fingers. I think he wants to talk to me. 
I think he wants to tell me. They are watching him every minute of every day. They are whispering to him in his sleep, changing him. They are taking my baby away from me. I can save him. There will be pain. But I love him, and in the end, uh, you will understand why. That makes a little more sense now, because I was like, who is they? Now I think, oh, okay, yeah, now I, I just, it just, for some reason, just clicked a little bit more with me. Uh, some of what she was saying. Um, we're going to head up to... Oh, are you kidding me? Did I go the... Shit, I wasn't paying any attention. I thought I was... I'm going the complete wrong way. Oh my god, are you serious? I apologize, you guys. I just... I thought for some reason... <sighs> okay... Well, all right, well, we'll just keep trucking along here. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute, this looks awfully familiar. I was caught up thinking about the uh, later part of the story and thinking about uh, where to leave the video off. And, yeah, I went, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. All right, sorry. But, um... I may give you a little bit of a spoiler at the very end, but I'll leave that for the end of the video, so if you guys don't want to know, you know, you can just stop it at the very end before I say anything. Yeah, okay, here we go. I, I knew we were walking for far too long. I'm like, there should be a gate right up here. Yep, my bad. Alright, so now we're going to go into the whole little food court area with all the mm, delicious fair food. That God, that's one thing I love about fairs, man. It's expensive, totally expensive, and not good for you, but man, mm, like corn dogs and and like cheese curds and just oh, just there's all sorts of good fair food. Um, so we got another oh, note here. Shocked by that one. Never found out who did it. Yeah, so <laughs> I love the headline. I love the headline for this. Basically, this guy got murdered behind the cotton candy stand. Was it cotton can cotton candy corpse leaves sour taste? <laughs> oh, okay, in pork. Okay, yeah, <laughs> basically, that's a. Oops, I I forgot. You can't hit escape. Um, yeah, that is a good headline. He's bad taste in mouth. All right, that's good. So this part, of course, you know, horror game, we got locked in. Now, uh, here's where I got a little bit stuck. For some stupid reason, I mean, I saw where I was supposed to go. I saw the sign here, but I just didn't look over to the right here. I just looked at that and went, oh, okay, cool, sign, dead end. And I didn't actually look. I didn't go far enough back here right away, but... Dun dun dun. Here's your body. Poor bastard. I did this to him. Yeah. And well, that doesn't look good at all. Oh well, I guess we'll can't do anything up here. Let's turn around. That got me the first time. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at all. And just I turned around because I actually I turned around a lot faster and I heard that noise and just saw him like oh hi yeah that one made me jump a little bit that's the only cheap scare that got me in this game um, yeah you know good job so I'm gonna trigger one or two one other little event here and then we're gonna I think we're gonna walk up to the front of the fun house and then we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up and I will let you guys explore the deep dark craziness of this woman's mind on your own These are mine. pill bottle
And of course, now we are on drugs or something, and we're all hallucinating. We got all kinds of crazy stuff in here. We used to just be, you know, it used to just be like walls and stuff, but now we got all kinds of graffiti. <laughs> Fuck gravity. Okay. Sure. There's just all kinds of weird graffiti on the walls. Callum, I'm sorry. All right. Boom. Knock that forward. Callum, I'm sorry. I love the weird trippy, like everything's all visually messed up and her voice is just all like... Hey, buddy. Let me pass. Alright, whatever, weirdo. Guess we'll go back this way and knock whatever this stuff is. Uh, we'll knock this over. And, yep, okay. Boom. There we go. Don't leave me here, Callum. Going through some nice halluc hallucinations. Check out these creepy guys. This wasn't here before. And that laugh is just like weird and kind of demonic. It's just weird. Alright, so we can't... Oh, uh, actually, yeah, we can run in here. I was going to say we can't run in here. Uh, later on, you can't. But at least when you're in the fun, the park area, you, you can. That's... Uh, Alright. Alright. And now our other gate is open. And she's all messed up. Her arms are all whatever. And she's uh, freaking out again. And boom. Passes out. So, yeah. Like I said, it, it's not just about her finding her kid anymore. There's definitely some other messed up stuff going on and I'm not really uh, I won't spoil some of it just yet uh, we're almost to the part where we're gonna wrap up the video I'll at least kind of collage of contradictions all of its own millions of people die every year in car crashes and the park has little cars designed specifically to simulate that action here the children scream with joy in the sideshow alley, you can walk away with 15 cents worth of mass-produced Chinese teddy bears while a grinning carny pockets your hard-earned five dollars. And what secrets lie beneath the sullen waters of the lake? The tears of jilted lovers, the soiled condoms of illicit affairs, the clotted blood of the lonely suicide. And the face of the witch looms over it all. I've always despised a toothy grin and warty nose. I hate that sparkle in her weathered, watchful eyes. I think Callum is waiting for me. Inside. Yeah. Okay, so... We came into the park kind of over there somewhere. Uh, fairly close to this, uh... Giant... Like... Giant head with its gaping open mouth here. And this is where we're going to leave it. Uh, we could go into the into the house but i think like i said i'm going to leave that part of the game for you um so we'll wrap the main part of the video up here if you don't want any spoilers um stop it here uh follow me on twitter at bgfh79 for video updates and other all kinds of other stuff that i've been tweeting hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh so if you want a little bit more kind of an idea what's going on basically I said everything, uh, this is spoilers ahead here. I'm going to talk a little bit about the game. Where what happens is like the whole second half of the game changes. You're not. This isn't a game, Callum! She's not freaking out anymore. Um, well, she is, but she's not necessarily looking for her kid. You start going through this fun house, and there's some like, you know, cardboard cutouts and stuff like that. But then it kind of merges into this weird, like, psyche thing of, like, oh, we're going to go through some weird stuff with her house. And, uh, like, you, f you find out what actually happened to her after her boyfriend died and she had Colin. 
and uh yeah, things get a little crazy, and I'm not going to spoil the whole ending, but let's just say, yeah, you know, she's going back from, like, scared and wanting her son back to, like, just hating him and saying all kind of, like, say, like I said, she just kind of went off on another rant again, and, uh, yeah, she's a little nuts in the head, we'll just put it that way. Um, so I will leave it for you guys to kind of uh, figure out the rest of the story, but it's sort of interesting. So this has been, um, this has just been kind of a quick look at the park. It is available on Steam right now. I want to say it's like 15 bucks, uh, full price. I picked it up a little bit ahead of time. Uh, it was on. It was actually on sale before it came out yesterday, so I was like, eh, you know what, um, this looks sort of interesting, I might want to try it for a Halloween video this month, so, yeah, picked it up, it's not quite what I thought it was going to be, as far as, like, what the trailer ha had me believe the game was going to be about, like I said, it kind of starts that way, and it starts sort of interesting, and the end of the story does sort of, you know, it does kind of go in an interesting way, just not the same, or not what I was expecting. Um, but it's interesting in its own right. So, you know, and it becomes a little bit more, the latter half of the game, like I said, in addition to the story, it becomes a little bit more about your traditional jump scares and, you know, kind of typical horror tropes. So, you know, if you like that, cool. If you don't, you know, whatever. But there you go. That is The Park available on Steam now, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys again later.